Hey everyone and welcome to another painting video. In today's video I'm going to review the Japanese watercolor palette Kumorebi by Mozart Supplies and a new set of cruelty-free watercolor brushes by Polina Bright. In the video I show you the process of my newest watercolor color pencils and gouache painting for this night's auction at the Bad Apple Artist Collective with the theme Chinese Zodiac versus Rainy Days. And of course I picked Chinese Zodiac because I could paint a dragon, yay! <laughs> I just love dragons and mythological creatures in general. And for this painting I decided to paint a dragon in the background and all his scales with the metallic paints that come with this palette, which was a very tedious process but totally worth in the end. And I will let you know my opinion about this kind of watercolor palette. But first of all let me show you the watercolors. The palette comes in this cute little silver tin box, which came unfortunately with a little dent on the corner, but I guess this just can happen when things are shipped overseas, so I didn't mind. The watercolors are still fine. And the set came with this little note. When they approached me, they said that they are a passionate little company and that they love their community and are very passionate about their products. And with this note, I could totally feel what they mean. Um, if you're not happy, you can contact them immediately. And it was really just a nice little gesture that they included this. And I also noticed that they shared a lot of art on their social media. So I think it's really fun to do art with their products and maybe get it shared on their account. So it's always nice to see that a brand is interested what their customers are doing. I'm also going to use this new set of synthetic cruelty-free watercolor brushes from the artist Polina Bright from Australia. The brushes are actually made in Germany, which I found super cool because I'm German, but other than that, I just found it interesting. And to be honest, in the beginning, I was rather skeptical because I usually don't use synthetic brushes for my watercolor paintings. I tend to prefer the natural hair brushes over synthetic ones, but I have to say I was really positively surprised on how well these brushes performed, but more about that later in the video. And for those of you who are interested in the materials and in the products, just check out the video description. I have listed every single product that I used in this video, whose links were to purchase them. Also, Polina Bright was kind enough to offer you a 20% coupon code for her brushes on Etsy. So if you wanna get her brushes and save some money, just follow the link in the video description and buy them from her Etsy store. Okay, let's begin with testing out the watercolors. I was really happy that the watercolor palette came with a paper chart that was already glued into the tin box because with other palettes I have to create these kinds of charts myself and that just takes extra time that I'm not always eager to spend. So this was definitely a bonus and I was very excited after I opened the palette because it reminded me of the Kuretake watercolors that I have tested some time ago. While I did the color swatches though, I noticed that the consistency of the watercolors was a little bit different. It was less gum-like, I would say, but I'm not 100% sure, so I will have to compare the two watercolors maybe another time to see if they have the same consistency. But just how the watercolor palette is designed and that the watercolors all look very different in the pen than they actually look when you paint them. Also reminded me a lot of the Kuretake watercolors. So I was eager to fill out the color charts so that I knew what colors actually are in this palette because they all look so dark and I was super surprised when some of the darks turned out to be a bright purple or a bright pink. And man was I surprised when I tested out the violet tones because they looked all so dark but when I applied them on the color chart they were so intense and so bright. I was so excited because I normally don't really have so many violet tones and that totally inspired me to do something violet for no apparent reason. The palette came with a couple of neon colors and I was thinking for what in the world would I need neon colors? And 
I made a very exciting discovery which I will show in the next videos I think where I will put those neon colors to use. Those of you who have followed my Instagram account and my Patreon already know for what I'm going to use them but for everyone else you can just stay tuned for my next video. Um, I didn't even know that I would use neon colors but they are amazing. I'm not going to use them a lot in this video but it's amazing that this palette has this kind of colors because you don't really see a lot of neon colors in regular watercolor palettes at least what I think but what do I know <laughs> okay also the palette comes with a set of eight different metallic paints and I love metallic paints man when I paint anything I try to include as many metallic colors that I can because I know when everything is dried it looks so interesting to have little clouds and areas of shiny little glitter in like unexpected parts of the painting and I really love that. I don't really use it when I paint skin for example especially in the face but everywhere else in the painting I would always try to include metallics if they fit. So the fact that this palette comes with a couple of different colors I could use them for more parts in the painting than I would normally use if I only have silver or gold. So for example it comes with green and with violet and I can just use it on more parts of the painting which is another bonus too. Yeah and that's it I just filled in the color chart. I was satisfied with the range of colors they looked to me as I would be able to paint anything with them. Nothing really was missing and I also thought that I will have no problems to mix any in between colors. So I find the palette is very well thought through and you can really get each color that you need for any painting subject, at least in my opinion. So and now let's start with the painting process. Yay! I'm so excited to show you this painting. As a reference photo I used three stock photos from Pixabay and combined them in Photoshop to make an interesting Photoshop composition and I found this gorgeous girl and this amazing dragon for the background and I decided to give the girl violet hair which I intended to only display with some crisp contours instead of painting in the complete hair because I wanted to have a contrast between the very detailed and colorful background and then the figure. If you combine a completely messy background and then you have a full colored figure everything can get really messy and it's just too much so I decided to make a single color hair as a divider between the two elements of this composition. I didn't encounter any problems with mixing the skin tones. The palette comes with a nice set of earth tones like red ochre, yellow ochre, Cambridge, orange, brown, burnt sienna and burnt amber. Also with a couple of red tones like crimson or carmine and all these tones are great for mixing skin tones so I couldn't complain it was all what I needed and I was very surprised because when I used the Kuretake watercolors which are Japanese watercolors I felt that it is hard to build layers with them because a lot of the paint get lifted off when I add up layers and layers. And with this watercolor palette I didn't have any problem. I found that you can lift off the paint if you really want. You just have to use a lot of water and when you try to lift off the paint with your brush you also have to apply a little bit of pressure but other than that layering was no problem. But also in this painting I don't have a lot of very strong dark areas. I felt that the black in this palette wasn't especially pigmented and looked more like a gray so if you are painting something where you need a lot of dark black tones you probably won't be happy with the black of this palette. But other than that for my subject it worked perfectly fine. I decided to start this painting with the face because this was definitely the most difficult part of the composition and if I had messed the face up I could just start over so there was no point for me to starting in the background because I had to be sure that the face looked good and in order to do that I only added a couple of of light beige layers for the skin tone and a couple of darker purpley layers for the shadows and for the eyeshadow and my painting just looked extremely ugly in this stage. I already compared it to a horror clown from a movie 
when I uploaded it on my Patreon page, like it looked really horrible. <laughs> But I didn't want to add so much watercolors there because I planned to use more color pencils on this part of the painting and I didn't want to have heavy or strong abstract watercolor effects in the face area. Because I'm painting on Fabriano paper, making smooth blendings is very difficult from my experience. So I don't even try it, I just added a couple of thin layers as a base for my color pencil work in the part of the face. And here I don't really rely on the watercolor palette anymore. I just switched to my favorite color pencils, which are polychromos color pencils. You can sharpen them really well so that you can work very precise with them and get a pretty even layer of pigment on the paper. You will still see the texture of the paper and in order to avoid that, as many of you know already, I use the wax-based luminance pencils from Carandage, which gives everything a smooth look after I have finished the color pencil layer. Rendering a realistic face with color pencils is a rather tedious process, but in my opinion it is worth it when you are looking for this kind of result. And if you are interested in learning more how I paint faces with watercolors and color pencils, check out my Patreon page. I have lots of tutorials and step-by-step -step painting lessons that guide you through the complete process from start to end on how to paint a face with watercolors and color pencils and how to make it look convincing and photorealistic. I also have a six hours long real-time painting video of this exact piece. If you want to know how I painted it and if you want to follow along, you also get to download my reference photo and the finished artwork in high resolution so that if you want, you can recreate this artwork by yourself. The video is not narrated, but it shows you the whole process. So for everyone who is interested, check out my Patreon page or go to my website. I will have a direct link to this video there for you. After I had finished the face portion with color pencils, I felt that I wanted her lips to be very soft. So I decided to get my gouache colors and added a thin layer of gouache on top of her lips. I used a older worn out brush which I dampen a bit to smooth out the edges of my gouache pigments so that it blends into the color pencils around the lips. I also used white gouache to add some highlights on her eyeshadow and I'm extremely happy on how the face turned out. I really think it looks three-dimensional and has a lot of depth so that I could go on and fill out the rest of the painting without having the feeling that I have messed up the face some way because this happens a lot to me and then I most of the time start over and create a new piece because I'm, I just hate the face. <laughs> this happens a lot. For the background, I simply rendered the subject as my reference photo and I used the neon blue color and the metallic blue color to fill in the sky and to make a couple of abstract watercolor effects. I really liked how that turned out. I love watercolor effects when they are in the background or even sometimes in the face. Just super difficult to control them so I have them in areas where they can't do any damage so not in the face but I really like to play with these abstractions. Then I went on working on the scales of the dragon and as a base color I chose a couple of the gold tones of the Komorebi watercolor palette and then after I had put down a base layer I just simply worked on every individual scale. I gave it a shadow highlights and to contour in order to render the dragon very detailed and realistically. With some metallic paints I feel that when the pigments dry I'm not really able to add more layers on top of them because sometimes you get kind of a plastic like surface when using metallic. I didn't have the feeling with the Komorebi watercolors at all so I was perfectly able to add more layers on top of the gold which 
was very needed because I had to add all these details to the dragon scales and I was very happy with the result. So I could use the gold and silver metallics very well with all the other watercolors. I could build layers, this was no problem. However, when you use metallic, you won't be able to get very deep when you paint the dark blacks, for example. It will always be a little bit shiny and not that dark, but for the dragon that was perfectly fine for me. And now I come to my thoughts about Polina Bright's brushes. So as I said in the beginning, I was a little bit skeptical because I'm used to natural hair brushes and I had the belief that synthetic hairs are not as good. And yeah, this was just wrong. So especially for the larger areas around her head, the background, the hair, everything large, the brushes were perfect, filling in the background areas and also getting into more tiny details with the brushes because all of them have a rather tiny tip that allows to work on details as well. I was overall extremely happy with them and I can't complain at all. For very small details, for example, the dragon scales, the eyes, like smaller contours, I used Neptune brushes and a fine detail brush. But for everything else that doesn't require super fine brushes, the Polina Bright brushes are perfectly fine and I like that they are cruelty free, obviously. I think they are really a great alternative if you don't want to use real hair brushes. Of course they won't behave exactly like real hair brushes because synthetic fibers are not as soft as real hair. So if you're looking for a super soft brush these brushes are not that soft but as I said I had no problems with them, I am very happy with them and I will continue using them. So that's my two cents on the brushes. I can definitely recommend them. So, and now back to the painting process, after I had filled in all the scales and details of the dragon, I continued on the remaining parts of the painting. I didn't record the complete process of the scales because it's just more of the same. Though it might have been interesting to see like a time lapse of me painting every individual scale. So maybe in another painting I'm going to record all of that. I continue with filling in the butterflies. So the butterflies weren't in my initial Photoshop composition. After I had printed my Photoshop composition out, I thought there something missing and I quickly drew three butterflies around the figure and because everything is already super detailed and full of color I had to make the butterflies single colored and it shows three different pastel tones to distinguish them from each other and because they still seem to get lost in the background I added a shadow beneath each butterfly so that they at least can be seen and they pop out a bit more. And for all the gouache highlights I used my absolute favorite gouache colors which are the 60 gouache colors from Arteza. Except for the white which I don't like, I love all the other paints. So for white I use Lascaux gouache paint which is way more opaque and I just mix it with the Arteza colors for the pastel tones of the butterflies. I also used gouache paint to add a couple of additional details to the hair because after I had put down the contour of the hair obviously it didn't look perfect and I had a couple of mistakes here and there so I just mixed a light violet tone with gouache and I could just go along the lines of the hair to make it look more perfect. Also for painting the very crisp lines of the hair I use a fine detail brush from Neptune. Neptune are my absolute favorite watercolor brushes. My friend Tracy sent them to me and I'm so thankful that I could discover these because of her because they are just so good. Probably the best watercolor brushes. I only have them in smaller sizes and I really like them. They are real hair brushes and for all the details I'm using Neptune watercolor brushes. But for every area that requires a larger brush you will be totally fine with Polina Bright brushes. In fact I find that they are even better because they're a little bit stiff and sometimes this is exactly what I want when I want to fill out a larger area in my painting. Okay and that was the process of this painting. I decided to call this painting Naga, which is the word of a mythological semi-divine snake creature from Indian mythology. These Naga are 
guardians and they live in the underworld and protect treasures like gold and gems. They are very powerful, they have very strong and deadly venom and they can also turn both into snakes, human and half forms. And my idea of the painting is that this beautiful seductive girl is a powerful naga that just arrived from the underworld but she's dressed in modern clothes. I absolutely love all the stories and modern novels where you have mythological creatures but they live in the modern world and they have to <laughs> kind of discover how the modern world works and I totally imagine this girl just discovering a smartphone or just arriving in her traditional clothes and then she had to go to the nearest store and buy some modern clothes so I just love these kind of stories and yeah here she is in her beautiful violet hair and maybe she has a secret mission that she has to fulfill. Every story is possible with this girl. Yeah, this is just my kind of character, a strong woman who pretty much gets what she wants, but not all the time like every one of us probably. Okay, and this painting will be available at tonight's Bad Apple Artist Collective Auction. I will leave a link down in the description. And yeah, that's it for the process. As I said in the beginning, if you're interested in seeing how I painted this painting from start to end, if you want to get the reference photo and try it out by yourself, support me on Patreon at the $10 reward tier. You get the six hour long version of this painting video. You're all set up to create this realistic face or all the dragon no matter what you're interested in painting this video will help you learning how I do it it is not narrated but if you're looking for narrative videos I've got you covered too I have over 70 painting videos and lessons that teach you on how to paint a realistic face in fact my last video was exactly about that on how to paint a realistic face with watercolors and color pencils. So if you want to up your painting game, go to patreon.com slash leobabrückner or visit my website for more info. And for the extra portion of art, you might even fancy the art surprise tier. For only $5 more, I sent you a beautiful set of three unique art gifts each month. I chose the best artworks and illustrations that I created and turned them into beautiful magnets, stickers and postcards, which are not only wonderful decorations for your home but also are rare collectibles because once I send them out they won't be available anywhere else and I don't reprint them. So get your art surprises package this month. So what are you waiting for? Up your painting game and join me now on patreon.com slash leobabrückner. If you like this video give it a thumbs up, leave a comment and subscribe to my channel that would be amazing. See you in the next one. Bye bye!